Welcome to Heaven Awaits. If this is your first time checking this channel out, I'm glad to have you here. My name is Jen, and I will be filling in for Lee until he comes back or finds another guest narrator. As Lee did before me, I too will be narrating the near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. These videos are meant to bring hope to a sometimes hopeless world and to show people that there is indeed life after death. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting the thumbs up, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. To the return viewers, welcome back. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and enjoy today's narration. I was one year old and fell from the metal climbing structure at the playground. All my life I have regarded this very unique experience as my very first memory. It is my oldest memory, and yet it is very vivid. I don't remember the events leading to my experience, but I remember the experience very vividly. I was not unconscious, but I would rather describe it as being super conscious. It felt as if I perceived it through a mature consciousness-slash-mind-slash-awareness rather than the toddler's brain. I don't remember how I fell, but I remember I felt absolutely no pain— nor did I feel the impact with the ground. It is hard to explain, but it felt as if I levitated upwards but somehow knew my body was on the ground. Up above me I saw this beautiful, warm, gentle, yet bright white light. The light had depth to it as it was brightest in the center, but there was also a spectrum of very beautiful and gentle colors. It was somewhat similar to the sun, but our eyes see the sun as a white, flat circle that is painful to look at. This light did not look flat, nor did it hurt my eyes to look at it. At that moment, it felt as if time had stopped or just didn't exist. I felt that the light was protecting me and nothing could ever reach me or harm me in its presence. I felt super calm and loved. It wasn't like the love between humans which involves various emotions. This love was unconditional and serene. I was levitating toward the light. At the same time, I knew that I was dead. I did not have a word for the concept of death. I had this strong perception that my life had ended and I was returning to where I originated from. I saw my life on earth as a split second and a tiny fraction of what I was supposed to live. I thought to myself, the equivalent of, was that it? No, this cannot be it. At that moment, I had a clear understanding of who I was on a fundamental level. I am not talking about earthly attributes like gender, race, or ethnicity. I am talking about the spirit me, for lack of a better term. I wasn't a human form, nor did I have an age. I just was. For the sake of explaining this experience, I am writing everything in linear order, however. All of this happened simultaneously. It is hard to explain. I saw a preview of the life I was meant to live. It all made sense, but I don't remember the details. I had a choice to either go towards the light and enter right through it, but I would have not been able to return. As pleasant as this place was, I wanted to continue my earthly life. I was supposed to become someone and was aware that I hadn't even started this yet. As per my wishes, I returned. Then the light started to fade and I saw two men walk towards the jungle gym. I initially saw them from the perspective of an observer on the side. A moment later, I was looking at them from the perspective of my body, which was on the ground. The one man was my father, and the other one was a family friend. Oddly enough, I could tell that they weren't too worried, but they felt a bit guilty. Although a toddler, I could understand just how young they both were. They seemed like just boys to me, although they were in their late twenties and early thirties. I was conscious when my father picked me up, but after that, all my memories fade. I do not remember anything after that until I was a bit older. The experience felt as if I awoke for a short moment from toddler consciousness, but then fell asleep, for lack of a better term, into toddler consciousness again. Later on, when I was about three years old, I started experiencing dreams. The dreams were a unique experience for me. All of a sudden, I remembered the moment I saw the light as a memory of its own category. It was neither a dream nor a waking moment memory. It was as real and even more real than real. I didn't know what to do with the memory, but knew that somehow I would ask about it when the time was right. 
As I was growing up, I didn't think much about death, but I have always known about it, despite the fact that people assume children are not aware of this reality. For many years, I didn't know what the experience meant. I could not understand why I had such a clear understanding at that age, but had early toddler memories from the following years. This became increasingly confusing to me, and as time passed, I developed this belief that I must have been reincarnated. If I had been an older child who died and was reincarnated, that would have explained the chronological issue. I had started to doubt that maybe I got the part about the men confused, and maybe that was my father from another life. I was determined that one day I would figure out who fell, and if a child indeed died after falling at the playground. I am now 34 years old. Only last year I decided to ask my mother if she remembers the event. I described it and named the people who I thought were there. She confirmed the event and said that I had fallen and hit my head. On earth, this would have amounted to seconds. Yet I felt as if I was out for an unmeasurable amount of time. What I witnessed and experienced does not match in duration to the duration of my falling and being picked up. I received the confirmation that it was me who fell and that I wasn't reincarnated. I don't talk about the experience much because I find that people just don't get it or they get frightened by it. They hold on to their limited, materialistic view and try to explain my experience as an optical illusion. To that extent, I understand them because they can't possibly imagine it. I know it is not an optical illusion. I am, however, very willing to share it with people who are open-minded enough to listen. That does it for Anelia's experience. I hope that everyone enjoyed this narrated experience. I want to again thank Lee for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Lee. You are in my prayers. I know that it is normally Lee who does this, but with him out of commission, you're stuck with me. This section of the video is where we will thank those who were kind enough to donate to the channel via Super Thanks or by buying Lee a coffee. Judy Hart, Tammy L., and Vit. Thank you again for your kindness and for being a part of this journey, and as always, a special thanks to those who continue to view these videos.